automatically we feel like we've been told that we are supposed to be attracted to this, you Absolutely. know, sex or th what this person would look like. But I started to gravitate towards feminine people, women in particular. Boom, bang, bang. Oh, hi friends and welcome back to a brand new episode uh, here on Queer. This week, I have the opportunity to sit down with Z, also known as Johnya Higgot. Z has an extensive career in activism, starting one of the original LGBTQ plus organizations in Barbados. In this episode, Z opens up about how they were super religious growing up and what made them leave the church. Their work in activism and the struggles that come with activism. Their LGBTQ plus travel company that they just started about three years ago, Pink Coconuts, and Z identifying as non-binary and what that journey has looked like for them. There is so much to learn in this episode. Don't forget, you can catch the entire story on our queer podcast. We have it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Check it out. Don't forget to subscribe. You can also check out our Patreon page for as little as three dollars a month. You can support the queer journey. Like, subscribe, and comment. And thank you for tuning in for a new episode. with religion because I was also a Christian. Right. I was a big Christian. Really? By the way. Yeah. I went to Black Rock Church of the Nazarene. Nice. And I think for the most part, I had a pretty decent relationship with religion. Yeah. I think what happened is that I had a bunch of questions that nobody had answered to. I was also battling my sexuality. So it was like, what is going to happen here? Clearly, th these two things can't reconcile. So I told God one day, I'm like, look, God, it seems like I like women here. I'm gonna continue liking women, but I promise I won't kiss them, you know. And then I kind of kissed my first my first girlfriend or whatever <laughs> crush, and then I was like, okay, cool, I won't kiss them, but I probably won't have sex with them. And then that happened. And then it was like, all right, God, I'm a real lesbian here. I'll promise to be a good person. I just will be good. I'll be kind to people. I'll stand up for people. Peace out. And I just like left the religion yeah. as it was. Do you still have a good relationship with religion or God? Um, I don't see it like I used to. My understanding of religion, I don't see it as as black and white. Yeah. You know, I think that it's all different interpretations of the same energy. If you give gratitude every day, then your energy will just multiply. Mm -hmm. You know, and in the same vein, if you're like complaining or you're just like, down in your spirits that kind of thing will continue to multiply yeah. so you have the power to determine your your surroundings through your own energy yeah. and that is when they talk about giving praise and thanks you know so it's to interpret it in that way and i think it's just almost different languages of yeah. the same energy were there moments where there there was a lot of like negativity towards lgbtq people do you remember any of that no, I'm Black Rock Church in Nazarene, per se. I think when I started to engage in activism, I saw it. I mean, regardless of what you believe in, people were just mean. They were, like, committed to being mean, to negating the existence of queer people, committed to telling people that they were wrong and sinful. And regardless of what you believe, like, this here nor there, like, people are people and just be kind to people. So I went back to, like, what my, my own feelings about how I left religion was like I'll just be kind to people but there are a lot of people within religion that are just just not kind yeah, yeah. they're just awful people yeah that to me is interesting because you know in a lot of religions they preach about being good to others be kind to thy neighbor all, all this stuff and then they have this moment where they're just not the nicest treating towards LGBTQ people yeah. because of who they choose to love, you know, yeah. or who they choose to identify as. Yeah. Like very simple, simple shifts in life, you know, but it can make someone that's so godly or so religious or such a great person in yeah. their eyes 
so nasty. I'm yeah. just like, I, I honestly don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand. I'm, I'm not harming you. But I'm not it's interesting for... because I don't want to get too deep into religion, but yeah. it's interesting because even in the Bible, like Jesus, you know, himself was like, guys, stop focusing on all this religion and this scripture and just love people. And the same thing just replicates. Like, people are just interested in, you know, their arguments on whether sexuality is right or whether yeah. it's good for society. Nice. And like, oh, da, da, da. yeah, like, yeah, okay, like, just, just chill. chill. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> so I know your mom is very, your mom is very religious. What was that journey like for you coming out to her? Ooh, that was rough. That was rough, rough. I just don't think she understood. And she How was, old were you when you... I was about 16, 17. Yeah, that was a really tough time, you know? What and was some of the good. dialogue, like the initial dialogue? It was rough. She called me like her homophobic slur, which was very, very, like, it was new for me because I never experienced, experienced that. that. And to experience that from your mother was wild. We really reconciled about three, four years ago. She said to me, if, you know, I didn't know them about them things. I didn't know them about them things. And I think she had a friend who had a son so they're they're shared you know their stories about their yeah. children being queer and they reconcile like we could just go and love them what you could do <laughs> you know just love your children yeah either you, you know, don't you, want them in your life or yeah or you, you do and you yeah. do and so she's come full circle and you know caribbean parents they don't really talk to you but they just do things like if they want to apologize they'll give you food you want some of this food here instead of apologizing with their or mouth dealing with the <laughs> issue <laughs> you, exactly they'll be like ah so you let me be kind. Like, let me be kind now, right? Wishful love. So one time she buys me, she buys me boxers, and she was like, "You like these ones? I know that you like." So, so that it was, was her like, way of "Yes, I was accepting." Yeah, so it was wow. really, really sweet. When you first came out to her, did like did she kick you out or did you? Have no, any... she didn't kick me out, but she was like, "This is not our relationship anymore." Yeah. Essentially, and that so was... you felt a huge shift in the way that you and her communicated after that. Oh yeah, we didn't communicate. Period. Wow. Yeah, we didn't communicate. Period. That's hard. Yeah, it was hard. It was hard. But people come around. And like one thing I like to say is, it takes us a really long time to be like confident in ourselves to get to a place of like living authentically, right? So how can we bring it on our parents and expect them to accept? Like, exactly. Right we can't even accept our parents. Can I say something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just put a unicorn and bleep it out. <laughs> hard for our parents who are not like researching these things like we are or hanging around people yeah. that we are to don't have the education don't, don't have, have the education exactly so i'm always saying like people are you know a victim of their circumstances Absolutely. and what we need to do is be able to see people where they're at see people from for who they are where they're at and then we go from there but don't expect somebody that never heard of trans people before to be like oh you should do this and da, 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 da. it's like yo be patient we all learning we all learning so rocky path with your mom but you went to the ue and you started quiche <laughs> Hit you with a quiche that was your was that would you say that was your like first step of like lgbtq activism or getting involved in that activism world? Uh, no, because I, I was humanities rep at that time. And I did for like, so you have these weeks, you have to put on a humanities and education week. And I did LGBT rights in the Caribbean. What? Yeah, we put on a, and that was like back in 2012, maybe. Um, was was that all scary for you? Like it was scary because I remember talking to admin, the admin office, like, "Yo, we gotta get extra security in here because I hear that this," and I was scared because I personally I had never seen anything like that in Barbados or done anything like that, so I was a little fearful for it. But you know, it was like well attended, and everybody was in agreement, and it was like, wait a minute. This university is quite inclusive. I think that's amazing because it shows you like how before every situation we always pre predict what's gonna what yeah. it's gonna be, and it's always a lot worse than it actually the outcome is. And, like, yeah, it's actually good to hear it back in two thousand and twelve. Yeah, that that much freedom or like acceptance was there for LGBTQ yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, and I feel like um, in in for anything or any place there's always a perception and then there's always reality Absolutely. and not to mention it depends on you know where you're going and who you're talking to so i don't ever 
I don't think I'm able to ever say when people ask me, so what is it like for Barbados, things in Barbados for LGBT people? Well, I was like, well, what do they look like? Where do they live? You know, because it depends on yeah, demographic. demographic. There's so many different things. That yeah, come yeah. So it depends, and that goes for all over the world. Whether yeah. you're going to Jamaica or you're going to the depths of Kenya or Ghana or any other place, people have different experiences depending on how they present and where they go. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you're, and even just like, like class in a sense, you know, like yeah. In so many societies, it depends on like wealth. You know, you have yeah. you're treated so differently. Yeah, you know, yeah. you have like an extensive, uh, in my mind, an extensive stance in activism in Barbados, LGBTQ activism, uh, and you were like very big in the media and pub uh, and publicity and stuff. How was that journey like for you? And what what kept you motivated? Because it's hard, like. Yeah. At the time when there's no LGBTQ organizations really in Barbados and you're going up and you're creating these these things, like you must have faced so many challenges. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. But I, I always felt like I started to understand the power of visibility and what that does for people because one of the core issues that I feel people, places like Barbados or any place in the world really and people face is that there are these myths about people like a unicorn. You mm -hmm. hear about it, you have all of these kind of perceptions about it but do you really face it much like perception versus reality so Absolutely. it's then important for people to who are queer to come out and say well i'm queer and we like the same movies i'm queer and we could talk about politics and like know these politicians or i'm queer and we can have common interests without thinking that queer people are these mythical creatures that are you know evil and are coming to get you because those things can continue to live and thrive unless you're face to face with something yeah but the journey was very very tough i think this it, is be glad right yeah this is be glad days what was the goals of the organization at first it was it was political and public advocacy so it wasn't really an organization that was focused so heavily on an insular kind of work it was the outside work because i felt i feel i felt at that time like <clears throat> the organizations that did exist uh you know work within the community which is important work very very important work but then there's another layer to that work which is outside of the community because we don't live in a in silos we live with other people Absolutely. so if you are getting the care that you need in your community and in your space with lgbt people but your mother or your teacher or the man on the bus or whatever are still having these kind of homophobic yes. thoughts, then it doesn't make the situation any better, your environment no, any better. Exactly. And that external work was very difficult because you come face to face with all kinds of people. I remember, uh, you know, being like accosted many times Accosted in what, what sort of ways? So this guy in particular, he just told me that he was going to kill me and he was going to put a head on my head. And I was in this space and he was like just on me for like 15 minutes, just like like cussing me and just going on and on and on and on. Even to the point that people around me didn't want to get involved. They looked at me and they were like, you know, and it wow. was like, like 15 wow. minutes of just like verbal abuse. And wow. it was just a lot. And, you know, and then there were things like people writing me and writing me and saying, you're going to hell. Um, and, you know, whenever you were, whenever I, you did something public, then I started to feel social anxiety. And then like, even with, during that time, I started to just be like, psychologically and mentally exhausted and tired and anxious and became very very socially anxious and i was becoming a recluse and then i recognized like Dania, this is not what you want to do i don't want to do it like this anymore because it's not healthy yeah. and if i'm being affected you know but i'm out here trying to save these people everybody and i'm trying to you know be everything to everybody but then it's like yo take care of yourself I, th I think what you're saying is important because take care of yourself yeah, like, I think people don't really understand the yeah. extent of activism and like 
we we always view active activists as like powerhouse people that like have so much boldness and energy and like just power and you do you completely do but there's a human side of you like that there are days where things hit you hard and like you know you're going up against these big organizations or governments and or or churches or people yeah. and it's just like that all affects your mental health when day after day after day you're getting the same conclusion or same negativity you oh, know yeah. like Oh yeah, and, and like when when like articles will come out on your paper, and you have all these comments, yo yo yo, bun them, da 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 da, bear this, and da, da, da. and then you you try not to read the comments first but, yeah, off. Yeah, no. Don't read you the some, comments. Don't read the comments. Uh, yeah, because that shit would keep you inside, and that's what it did. And then I yeah. was like, I'm no down. more. And how can I do the same work in a way that brings me joy, and makes me happy, takes care of me, but still has a similar uh, end in mind. Yeah. And that was the birth of Pink Coconut. For people that aren't watching, that don't know what Pink Coconuts is. So Pink Coconuts is a web app uh, that connects LGBT travelers with friendly spaces, adventure, and communities. We want to make it easier, safer, more friendly, more fun, and connected for LGBT people to travel the world. So, That's great though. Yeah. I think it's so important, you know, because as LGBTQ people, especially if you're traveling as a couple or with your friends, you're always like, okay, what are the friendly areas I can go yeah. to? Is this place going to be homophobic? Can I do this event? Are, it, are, they, are they homophobic? And you know nothing about anywhere you're going to anyway, so it's so important to do research. Yeah. But if you can find that one website that just has it all for you, it's yeah. so great. And yeah. if you have... And if they can create that community for you, that is so important. Yeah, yeah, it is. But then there's also like an advocacy strategy behind Pink Coconuts, which is recognizing that above like laws, above, you know, you know, the social services that are available to the community, at the crux of a lot of the issues are, is economic issue. So if LGBT mm -hmm. people don't have jobs, mm -hmm. They are not happy, regardless of if the laws are like you know inclusive or or not. Uh, so it's recognizing that the power of the LGBT travel market one, and how do you then empower local community through through bringing people here? But also like how much tourism uh, a country can make from LGBTQ people. Yeah, and I don't the fact even that know. You're not viewed as an LGBTQ friendly country. You leave money on the table, people's. Yeah. And that's money that can be in where people pocket. So. Yeah. I think it's important, you know, like the aspect of just like getting LGBTQ entrepreneurs involved too. Mm -hmm. So then other LGBTQ people can support that. Because yeah. we're always looking to support LGBTQ yeah. people no matter where we go. Yeah. You know? So yeah. I think that's such a beautiful aspect for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get that? All the links will be below. You are non binary. Mm -hmm. What has that journey been like for you? It is so interesting. So when I, I, I started the journey when I went to the continent recently. Yeah. And it was it like, was like how did it how did it happen? Yeah. Well, the truth is like I feel like, you know, when you go to another place that nobody knows you, you know, nobody has uh don't have any kind of history of you, and then you recognize I can be anybody here. I can be and I remember going to a shoe store, I needed shoes for some reason, and I bought these boots. And I started to feel myself in these boots. It was like yes. these high cut boots. And I was wearing short pants with high cut boots. And then they started wearing hats and thing. And then like, it was just a vibe. Like legit, kid you not, just go bare start growing. It was much bigger when Zoom I was in. on the continent. Zoom it yeah. was like big. It was like, it was not like big, big, but big for me. Yeah. You know, and I was like, you know, and then I just started to really just sit into it. And then one morning I just woke up and I was like, call me Z. Was there any like person that you met or like, a non-binary person that you've had conversations with? Did you do research or did you just like... No. Felt like this was the most natural? Just no, no, I think there were times though where like I was either invited to be a part of the like a, a women's cohort thing or I remember like even here being a part of like inviting to this sor soroptimist uh, entrepreneurs in heels thing and I'm like, I don't know if I feel comfortable here. This is, I mean, it just didn't it's fit. Right. Yeah, yeah, it didn't fit right. 
I started to explore like pronouns and stuff and I thought to myself, but I don't want to be a man either because I did, I just, I guess my own feelings about, you know, how homophobic men have been, you know, to either me or the people mm -hmm. around me or like misogynist and stuff like that. I was like, I'm not sure if I want to identify as that either. But then it's like, why can't you identify as Everything. neither or both, you know? And then I recognize that my own gender identity and gender is on a spectrum. Absolutely. So we we can choose, we have that ability to choose either we want to identify as a man or a woman, but we can identify as both or neither or, you know, non-binary. And so it just, it just sat right with me. And I've been since then, really exploring my masculinity a lot more it's beautiful the fluidity of just like which Gen you can just like um dress without even worrying about limitations you know like for yeah. me it's just like if i put on a, a dress or a skirt it's just like there's so much that comes with it yeah whereas just like it should be fluid like exactly. people shouldn't care people shouldn't but care. having that fluidity to do that is like so beautiful yeah and it's like so beautiful what rupaul says all the time you're born naked and the rest is drag because literally like these are things that are added to us and not necessarily comes from us so we should yeah. be able to you know dress how we feel more confident and comfortable yeah. do you from like society norms, do you ever feel a little bit like um, insecure or anxiety when you dress a little bit more masculine? Oh yeah, oh yeah, sometimes. Um, I think I will probably stay away from it, I guess here in Barbados a little bit because I feel people have a lot more expectations of me. Yeah. And then two, there's a lot of respectability politics yeah. about you know how boyish is, you know, is this respectable? And I think it's like a colonial thing too, but. Yeah. But I don't know why I felt so comfortable, like, just really exploring it hardcore on the continent. It's just interesting how, like, you know, like, places maybe you would not think that are, like, super open to it. Yeah. And I know, like, homophobia stems from colonialism. I yeah. completely get that. Yeah. When you do a lot of research of history, you understand that places were, like, actually quite fluid before. Mm -hmm. Until colonial laws and colonial religion and all Absolutely. that shit came yeah. in and, like, changed it. But... Like places like that, you just for me, I would never think that they would be like that kind of open to it. But it's interesting to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but at the same freedom. time, it's about it's about your it's about personal person experience, yeah. right? And where you went. Yeah, or... but yeah, Nairobi is definitely like more open. Yeah, they're more exposed just generally. Totally. Yeah. Like a bigger city too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How has the communication of gender been for you? I know, like, coming here, you know, I kind of... I was more uh, wondering here. Yeah. Because people are not exposed to it. Yeah. I just explain to people the concept of uh, a spectrum where, you know, just just binary thinking overall. Because there's been something that I love exploring, even politically, around... We have a thunderstorm right yeah. now. <laughs> I like it. Um, it's kind of cozy. Yeah, even politically, like, like even even with this uh, COVID, these back and forth, people are fascinated, people are not fascinated, and there's just such a divide. It's like, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Absolutely. We always think in binaries, like it's either this or that. You're either male or female. Mm -hmm. And it's easy for our brains to do that because, you know, our brains doesn't want to do the work of of seeing things as a spectrum, but th two concepts can ex both exist at the same time, and that is perfectly okay. Yeah. So I've been dubbing it non-binary politics, I love that, which is just not seeing things as either or. Things are on a spectrum, and these things exist, and we don't have to be at either end of the table fighting. Yeah. Things don't have to be so black and white. white. Yeah, so yeah. true. What's one thing you would like to say to like just help people understand maybe like non-binary a little bit more? I think I'd go back to, to saying that gender is on a spectrum yeah. and that they're, they're feminine people and they're masculine people. Like RuPaul says, you're born naked and the rest is drag. So everything else is added to us and, and, and is there to tell us how to behave and how not to behave. But really and truly, that doesn't come from within us. It comes from outside and external factors. So if we uh, are truly in touch on, with our level of masculinity or femininity as human beings then we'd embrace them both instead of uh somebody being uh born you know 
biologically with testes and then they have to cut their hair short they have to like ch chucks they have to do this it's so like binary imagine if we were brought up in as kids with no limitations on what we wanted to do not the clothes we wanted to wear not the colors we wanted to yeah. like not the toys we wanted yeah. to play with imagine if you had that freedom and you weren't getting shamed for how would we all grow up how would life be so different yeah and we can like it would it's just so interesting because like there's so many of us that gravitate towards like in society norms more f effeminate stuff yeah and get shamed from such a young age yeah. for that shit you yeah. know yeah and it's, it's so just not fair because it's like so... why 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 do you want to be brought up in a place like that yeah why couldn't you play with a barbie yeah why couldn't you play with a truck yeah you know why couldn't you play with a barbie and a, a truck? truck yeah you know? barbie in a truck. barbie sitting in a <laughs> truck, truck. Yeah. <laughs> And it's so crazy. sad to see, you know, children just gravitating towards what they like and then parents just saying, no, you can't wear that or don't bring that pink thing for my child because it's like, really? Yeah, life, life just, shouldn't be so limiting. You yeah. Know? We only got one to live. So let's just do it for the max. Yeah, do your thing, do your thing. But it's nicer at this. Even, but like, you know, even now, like, I experience moments where I'm just like, I would love to like wear this or I would love to like do this but you go through like for me to get to that place of doing that I go through so much mentally of just like oh but that's too feminine or oh, like this is yeah. this or da, da, da. and then I get to a point where obviously you're like okay fuck it who gives a shit yeah. but the amount of steps you have to go through mentally to get yourself to a place of doing that is yeah, really sad it's because this world it's really sad. this world I heard something recently uh, it was a song that says, you don't have to change, your world has to change its heart. I love that. So we shouldn't have to change who we are just to fit into the world. The world should just, you know, be accepting and yeah. recognize that there are all kinds of people on this green, well, climate changing earth. <laughs> um, and, you know, just live. And yeah, I let love people that. Do your thing. From your years of activism and just like working and, and pink coconuts and everything. From the start to, to like now, I guess, from your lens, how have you seen Barbados evolve LGBTQ ones? Wow, I've seen some visibility. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it so much. I mean, I think we have all done a lot. Yeah. A lot of like all of the advocates, even the party promoters. Yes. You know, even some of the politicians that came out and supported, everybody played a part into bringing Barbados, like, forward, you know? Um, and it's really wonderful to see. So, yeah. to the advocates out there, keep the work up. Absolutely. I think um, people are doing such amazing work here. Yeah. And it's just, it, it goes to show, like, even me coming back here this time, I've realized such a huge change. That's wonderful. And just people being a lot more like understanding or accepting or tolerant, not and and learning, wanting, curious to learn. You know, and I think it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's circumstantial, but it's it's still saying something. Yeah. It's still saying something that yeah. things are changing here. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's beautiful. What's one last message you would like to say to anybody who is watching? One Look last message. In Look into the camera. Yeah, girl. Or S Z. Sorry. No, it's cool, V. I'm a girl too. So don't know, worry. Know, know. <laughs> um, keep going. I think maybe there's somebody out there that is really, really having a hard time, whether that's financially or or even personally with with because it really, really tests a lot of us in many, many ways, in, in different ways, but it was testing or it is still testing. So I think I would want to encourage people to keep going um, and that despite us being all separated in our silos and trying not to get COVID, there are people there, there's still community there that you can tap into online um, and in person too. But I feel like there's a separation that COVID has really brought. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, yeah, and you, you're, you're not alone, so keep going love don't stop it. Yeah. well 
We done. Boom. Thank you so much for coming on Queer. Yeah, yeah, this was fun. Um, I really appreciate you. I love the work that you're doing. And it's finally just nice to meet you in person. Yeah. And you have like all these deep chats. Yeah, you know? it's fun. It's fun. Wow, we thank you, Z, for coming on here and sharing your journey with us. Z has taught me to have a lot more empathy for people that aren't exposed to the LGBTQ plus community. Aid them in their journey and be patient. People do come around. Also to continue to learn and educate yourself and love those around you. Good luck with your adventure of pink coconuts. I wish you all the best. I'm sure our paths will cross. I love you and I appreciate our friendship. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I'll catch you guys next week for a brand new episode, the season finale. All right, ciao for now.